Thanks, Riaz. Good morning. Premier Christy Clark will soon be joining the B.C. Liberals from the legislature floor in Victoria after easily winning last night's by-election in Westside Kelowna. So thank you. Thank you, Westside Kelowna, for welcoming me with open arms and open hearts. I am so grateful for that. Clark jumped to an early and decisive lead over her main opponent, New Democrat Carol Gordon. By the end of the night, the Premier had 62% of votes, more than doubling the ballots earned by the NDP. Now that she has earned a seat in the legislature, Clark is ready to get right to work. I am going to do everything that I can, everything that I can, to earn and deserve the support that the people of this community have given to me tonight because you've earned it. In other news, the Prince of Pod could be returning to Canada because the U.S. is willing to send him back. The American Justice Department has approved Mark Emery for transfer. He's been doing time in the southern U.S. since 2010. Emery was sentenced to five years for selling marijuana seeds online. Ottawa still has to approve a transfer to a Canadian jail. The decision lies in part with Canada's public safety minister, but that job is vacant after the resignation of Vic Taves this week. Another change for False Creek could be on the way with news Edgewater Casinos is setting its sight on a new piece of property closer to BC Place. Greg Harper joins us now live from downtown Vancouver with the latest. Greg. Jody, the company that owns Edgewater Casino, which is in Falls Creek right now, wants to move the casino here. This is just west of BC Place Stadium. Right now, this is a, a parking lot, uh, but the company is hoping that the Edgewater Casino will be here. This isn't the first time that Paragon Gaming has tried to do this. Some of you may remember it was back in 2011 when the city actually rejected a plan from Paragon Gaming to build a mega, mega casino complex near BC Place. It was a $500 million proposal, lots of opposition to it at the time. Paragon Game has actually created a website dedicated to the new development. It would be just west of BC Place Stadium at Expo Boulevard and Smythe Street. On the web page, it says that Paragon Gaming has signed an agreement with Pavco, which owns the land, a reported lease of $3 million a year for 70 years. But this is far from being a done deal. Uh, Paragon Gaming has applied to get a, a new operating permit uh, from the city. Uh, the permit there at Edgewater Casino, it expires at the end of this month. Uh, the company wants to extend it until 2016. That's when the company hopes that the new Edgewater will be here. Jody? Be interesting to see how this unfolds. Thank you very much. Greg Harper reporting live for us this morning. A Surrey neighborhood is shaken by a suspicious fire last night. A garage on 159th Street exploded with the ensuing fire gutting the building. Neighbors along the block were evacuated for at least a couple of hours. There were initial reports the blast was created by a drug lab, but that is not being confirmed. For now, RCMP and firing investigators are in the process of determining the cause. Heavy security at B.C. Supreme Court in Vancouver as United Nations members arrive for a sentencing hearing. The five gangsters have pleaded guilty to conspiring to kill members of the rival Red Scorpions. The men will be sentenced to between 11 and 14 years in jail. As a high-ranking member, Barzan Tilly Choli faces the high end of sentencing and possible deportation back to his native Iraq. They're overcoming adversity. And there is overcoming adversity, and then there is Rumana Munzur. The attack victim has reached a major milestone while preparing for her next challenge. The frequency of the cyclones became worse. That's Romana successfully presenting her thesis at UBC on her way to achieving a master's degree. She spoke about the impact of climate change on her native Bangladesh. Manzur was back home two years ago when her husband attacked her, disfiguring and blinding her. The biggest challenge to me, of course, like living uh, as, a, as a sighted person for uh, all my life, like most part of my life, and now living as a blind person, uh, the experience I've been, I think that is the biggest challenge. Romana is not done at UBC. Starting this fall, she is pursuing her law degree. She hopes to reform the legal system in Bangladesh, helping women who don't have a voice. Sports news now, there will be NHL hockey played March 2nd here, that's no surprise. 
Until you hear that the game is slated to be played at BC Place as our city has been awarded the Heritage Classic game. The NHL confirming BC Place will host the game featuring the Canucks and the Ottawa Senators in a tribute to the 1915 Stanley Cup final between the two teams. Of course, the Senators and the Vancouver Millionaires. It's one of six outdoor games planned for next season. And at Nat Bailey Stadium last night, a bit more anticipation than the average C's game as the Canadians took on the Boise Hawks featuring outfielder Trevor Gretzky, son of Wayne. Trevor is hoping to complete the long journey from single A to the majors while playing in his dad's shadow, albeit in a different sport. Oh, you know, ever since I was little, he's preached to me, you know, work hard. You do uh, the right things and you play hard on the field, the good things will happen. You know, uh, you know, all sports are kind of the same and, you know, he's helped me throughout my whole career. Trevor was one for three last night as the Seas beat the Hawks 6-5. The teams play four more games through Sunday and it is expected that Trevor's famous dad, Wayne, is expected to be here for at least one contest this weekend. He's such a combination between his mother and his father, that Trevor Gretzky. And of course, he's number nine. Of course, paying homage to Dad's of 99. Of